What up? This is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of Netflix new movie, A Castle for Christmas. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, and ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramascreen. That's patreon.com slash ramascreen. Let's rock this. Uh, sometimes I wonder, why do I keep bothering to watch these low-rated quality rom-coms? Am I a glutton for punishment? Am I gullible? or naive enough to expect that maybe the next one could be decent. But the truth is, it's all crapshoot, man. It's all by chance. Sometimes you're lucky enough with films like the recent Love Heart, and sometimes you're just unlucky, such in the case of A Castle for Christmas. England-born Carrie Elwes may be able to do a much better Scottish accent than Mel Gibson in Braveheart, but even Carrie can't save this movie from being a complete disaster. A Castle for Christmas is dreadful, it's generic, it's shallow, it's pointless, and the worst violation of them all it's just not funny. Written by Ali Carter and Kim Byer Johnson and directed by Mary Lambert, in A Castle for Christmas, famed author Sophie Brown travels to Scotland hoping to buy a small castle of her own. But the prickly owner, Miles, the Duke of Dunbar, is reluctant to sell to a foreigner. Working to find a compromise, the pair constantly butt heads, but they just may find something more than they were expecting. Starring Carrie Elwes, Brooke Shields, and Drew Barrymore. There's an upside to everything, right? Even the most loathsome movies have one or two redeeming qualities. Well, the way I see it is, at least, A Castle for Christmas was actually filmed on location in Scotland. They're like, well, my good lads, we may have ourselves a terrible script, but my god, we are gonna shoot this crapola in the highlands or we die trying. So what you see here is not some soundstage or green screen or some other place posing as Scotland. The breathtaking views and the sceneries and the extravagant interiors for the castle almost, almost make me forget this film's overall atrocities. What do I think of Carrie and Brooke's chemistry? Hmm, I'm still trying to figure that out. Mainly because on paper or theoretically, their characters look good together. I'm a big fan of both actors from the works they've done in the past. But you can't manufacture chemistry, much less an effortless one, when the story only settles for mediocrity. So A Castle for Christmas clearly has no intention of reinventing the wheel. So anyway, this movie is not worth my time ranting on and on about it. If you thought Father Christmas is Back was painful to sit through, well, for your health, it's best to skip A Castle for Christmas altogether.